block here today to deck it with a BHJ fixture. Show you how I do it. Square the fixture up here. Doesn't have to be, but I just feel better about it. We have rings that fit all the different main bearings. The race saver, 305 stock block. We have tapered cones that fit in the cam bearing holes. Centers up off of those. We'll get the deck 90 degrees to the cam tunnel and the mains. A little bushing right here fits on the bracket that goes on the bar. Slider bar here. Have a nice little plate here. Comes with this fixture set up. It's on like so. Lock that in place. We have these little things that go in the head bolt holes. so you get a nice big sweep across this flat plate right here. From the center here to the center here, up to here is a 90 degree. Once this plate's tightened up nice and tight like this, these are tight on both ends. Then we can indicate the, the plate in. Got it indicated in. Got a nice little deck mic that comes with the fixture setup, measure, blocks, take a reading to the outboard side, take a reading to the inboard side to see how much difference there is from this plate to the deck of the block, and then start getting it set up to cut some. You got these clamps that go on the end. I'll put those on. They don't have to be super tight, just snug. Always check, make sure everything's tight before you start machining. Easy cut job. Back it off, loop to the other end. Take off the end. See where I'm at. And Take a zero path. This block from the end to end here is off about 4,000. 4,000 higher on each end than it is. Here. Normally I've got a cover that kind of goes up here, but I'm going to kind of leave it off. Some cold few chips here and there, but I wanted y'all to be able to see. Get you a close up view. You can see where it's just barely skimming along the top edge and gets heavier down towards this end. 
So we've got a little ways to go. The distance from the center of this to the top of here, eight inches. When you measure it, you're measuring from here to here with the depth mic. Set it up and I check this side to see where we're at. Move it to the other side. See what numbers we get. There is a little bit of difference from side to side, but we haven't completely cut here. But I'm going to make a small adjustment by just loosening these just a hair, which will drop this side, which this side was a little tall. So even though you've indicated it in, that's the best method that I've found to make sure you're square. Make a few more cuts on it. Come back and check and see how square we are. 15, 16, 7, 17 and a half. We're at 17, so half thousands. That's acceptable. Show you what the depth looks like here. And we're not down to where we need to be. How uneven, unsquare it is. We'll make some more passes on it and get it down to nine inches. I'll show you here. I've kind of learned over the years. I've got blocks in from other shops that's been decked and I've redecked them. It's not just my machine. Every, all of them that I've done have been the same way. I just take a marker and make some black lines. Like so. You can see them across everything. And I go back and do some zero passes. And you can see how much deflection in all this stuff is. The head, the bearings, probably some in the fixture and it will amaze you at how uneven it looks after his first zero pass. If you look real close, you can see that black line that was running right there is missing. That one's missing right in the center, missing in the center, the thinner and the thinner, the outside edges, it's still all there. Couple of zero passes. I don't know how well y'all. There you go. You can see that one. That little black line, right there. A little bit there, up here. It's just hard to see it, but it's there, right in, right along there. Need probably one more pass, probably a tenth, and that should square this thing up. All right. Got it all cleaned up, looking good. Going to swap it over and cut the other side now. Just like I was explaining on the other side, you can see this is a factory GM, and you see that shiny line across there where that deflection occurs. Same area here where it's open in the cylinder area it acts a lot different. I'll make some more passes and show you another picture. About three thousandth cut. It's pretty point, you know, all the way across here and as you go down it does the same thing again. You can see where it's hitting there. And if you remember correctly on the other side, when we did the other side back here, it was hitting back here first, and it's hitting up here this time. That's how much twist is in this block. Could have been that way originally from GM. It could have been over the usage period of time it's been used. It could have been hot at some point in its life. It wasn't very square, so we're going to get her squared up here and move on to boring it. Moved over to the hone after the decking. Going to torque the deck plate up. The pattern I'm using here is backwards, probably from what 
a lot of people use, but there's a reasoning behind my madness. It uh, puts a little different stress on the, the block. And it's the same pattern that I use whenever I'm putting on a small block Chevy head. Seems to work pretty well. All right, we got the home set up. Got started on it. Uh, I usually do four different grips of stone. I don't know how much difference it really makes, but kind of rough it in with a pretty coarse stone. Leave roughly four to five thousandths and start stepping it down from there and finish with a brush home. diamonds unless I've got a block that has nicosil in it. I kind of like the stones, used them long enough. I know how to get the finish I'm looking for with the stones. I don't know, there's a couple things about the stones I just like better. bit of a kind of a boring process I'm sure for y'all watching but you know at least it shows y'all what it takes to get a block ready I do have a profilometer that I use I'll show y'all a little bit about it I know there's a lot of stuff on the internet about that right now so everybody has what's right what's wrong I'll just show you how it works Done with the first set of stones. Move on to a different grit. Uh, up here on the instrument, there's a load gauge, and on the head inside, they have a feed rate. You want to get it set up so the pressure stays pretty consistent in this scale when you're honing. That means that the amount of pressure being applied with how much material is being removed is consistent. handle I'm moving the block up and down uh, in the home to adjust where my stroke is to try to keep a straight cylinder y'all watching me hone on a block is probably like sitting around watching grass grow waiting for something to happen But at least you, you know, see the whole process. One thing I have learned over the years uh, with honing with this machine is if you 
home too fast as far as feed rate, you can actually make an egg-shaped cylinder top to bottom, make it bigger in the middle. The cylinders would deflect enough to cause an egg-shaped cylinder. So you don't want to apply too much pressure. You have to apply just enough pressure to compensate for the stone wear. And that's the best way I've found to do it. Okay, we've got it all finished honed. Use a little brake clean or something to spray cylinders. Get all the oil off of them. Wipe them out. Got my profilometer. Check the cylinder finish. The tool just slides in. Then push the button and the little probe moves up and down the cylinder and checks the valleys and peaks. You get a number on it. And we are on cylinder number H. Okay. We will go to another cylinder. See where we're at. I'll do a whiteboard at the end like I've always been trying to do. It helps with understanding a little more about this. It even helps me sometimes to draw stuff up on a whiteboard. There's a RPK, RVK, and an RK. We have the peak, the valley, and the core roughness. This was the numbers that I was working towards and pretty much ended up with on that 305 race saver sprint car block. This is kind of what it looks like. This center line is right here. It's more of an imaginary line that the profilometer determines. So you know, your peaks are above the line, your valleys are below the line. I use a four step honing process. At the end I use a brush hone. It will pretty much take and knock off any sharp peaks like so. And then you end up with little surface flats like so across the top of it. Thank you very much. Subscribe. I appreciate everything. And I'll keep putting out some videos. I appreciate it. Thank you.